My name is Stephanie Umo, and I am a New York City-based actor. I've been on Broadway with uh, Ragtime, Revival, and Falsettos, and Junk at Lincoln Center, and, um, you know, done off-Broadway, and film, TV, commercials, I mean, you name it, I've done it. And currently, <laughs> on break, I want to call it a break, but, um, you know, from the pandemic, from a uh, tour with Hamilton playing Angelica Schuyler, just kind of waiting to see what happens next. Hopefully we can go back on tour this next year. But for now, I'm at home um, in Connecticut now where I'm living, um, waiting for things to start back up again. I went to the Boston Conservatory, which is a four year amazing uh, musical theater program. And I was kind of late in the game. I would say I didn't really know any musical theater or theater in general until about a year up before I went to school. And um, the reason for that is because I was, I always saw myself going to school for pre-med. And when I very last minute changed my mind about that, um, literally the Boston Conservatory was like one of the only schools still, still accepting late applications. So. I did that and um, applied, got in with a scholarship, and um, that those those four years changed my life. And and um, the base the basis of technique, I think, is what it gives you a foundation in which where you um, can a starting point and a point where you can always rely on and fall back on. So, to me, training and technique is so important to have because, let's say, if you get sick and um, you have to do a concert. Well, technique is gonna give you the ability to work through or above or around your illness. Um, you know, same with plays, same with uh, dancing. I mean, all of that, you know, if you are injured and you need, you need, a, you need to rely on the, the, the information and the technique that your teachers gave you. Um, it's very, very important. I would say one of the moments in theater when I needed to use my technique the most was when I was doing falsettos and I was covering um, in that, that Broadway show. I was understudying Tracy Toms and Stephanie J. Block um, and, and uh, Betsy Wolf. And, but the, the, I had to go on for Stephanie J. Block very last minute. And I had no rehearsal. I didn't know, I had no costumes or anything. And so I, we all decided that I would go on on a, on a matinee with a script in my hand. And I did it. Um, and I would say, you know, what technique taught me and training taught me in that moment was to really keep my head in the game, stay focused, um, and, to, and also to, to remember to tell the story because that's ultimately what you're doing. You're telling the story. So just be honest and truthful um, and that is something I always carry with me. Um, and, and I think that my, my technique was really put to the test when I had to go on last minute. It was crazy. I would say some advice that was given to me um, by the one and only Audrey McDonald when I was about 19 years old and I went, some friends and I in college, we, we gathered our little coins and we got on, a, got on a train and went to go see her performance, Connectedy, New York. And after the show, she came out and she spoke with us and we were like, hey, do you have any advice for us? And her advice was to be true to yourself, remain who you are. And that did, advice never made sense to me until I actually became a professional performer. And then I sort of personalized that advice and never forgot it. And I, and I sort of personalized it. And for me, it means um, this business will try to sort of I, I, uh, place an identity on you, will put you in boxes, will say you're this type, you're that type, you're this type. Well, that can start getting confusing if you don't know who you are. So begin the journey of knowing who you are. Then when, when you get into this industry, you won't be confused by the types of roles you start playing. You know what I mean? And you can like really um, 
feel solid in who you are. Um, I would say another piece of advice is um, to never stop um, figuring out other things that you love to do. I think this is, the, the, there is no truer moment than now when all these artists are displaced or on hold or you know things aren't happening. We've all had to figure out and go back to what other things that make us happy. That could be reading books, that could be painting, that could be reading scripts, whatever it is. It could be anything. But make sure you don't put your entire identity into one thing. Because there will be times when you're working all year, and then there will be times where you don't work. So um, just remember that. It's really helped me. I know it's helped a lot of my uh, peers in, in, in the industry. So yeah, best of luck, everyone. Mwah.